Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I came across this excellent paper called A Review on the Erosion Mechanism in Cavitating Jets and Their Industrial Applications. And I think we can learn from this in applications that are not discussed in this paper. And I would like your opinion on it. Anyway, the abstract there says cavitating jets have been widely studied for over a century. But despite the extensive literature on the subject, the implementation of cavitating jets in many industries is still very limited due to technical challenges. The main purpose of the present paper is to provide recommendations on using the cavitating jets based on a comprehensive literature review on the erosion mechanism in these jets. Self-resonating jets are extensively discussed in the present paper due to their importance in amplifying the erosion effect of cavitating jets. The influence of different jet nozzle geometric parameters and the operating conditions of the cavitating jet flow on the erosion mechanism is also discussed. Finally, well drilling in addition to multiple other industrial applications of cavitating jets are examined. So this is by Mohammed El Hassan et al. And it was published uh, open source uh, on uh, MDPI and it is 2nd of April 2021. Okay, so lots and lots of very interesting things in here, but I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Uh, it has the equations to work out what you need to think about, but it is this where I am looking and being very interested. This is an unexcited jet, and you can just see the streams coming out and shearing off to the sides. But in this case, in an excited jet, then you have vortex cores and induced velocity. So uh, you have literally a vortex and a counter vortex here. This is a torus, this is a donut, and these are vortex cores coming out. So this is firing out solitons from this excited jet. So it says here, Johnson et al, 23 and 26 reference, developed an organ pipe cavitating jet called CaviJet for achieving a structured jet through a pass passive resonating principle. This figure two, with our solitons coming out here. The nozzle was shaped such that the hydrodynamic frequency of the vortex ring is close to the natural acoustic frequency of the supply system. Therefore, a resonance occurs in the supply chamber that will further excite the jet such as aeroacoustic coupling it, such aeroacoustic coupling is similar to that found in rectangular cavities okay so could we see this as part of the feed the rectangularish cavity that we have on the entry port to the wind hex and could we have a specific shape of our uh, blades on our so-called whistle, which would enhance the production of solitons. Of course, we're not going through a circular uh, port. We are going through a slit. But still, um, you know, if we had uh, vortex and counter vortex, you could imagine them linking up at the top and the bottom and it then uh, uh, sort of going out into a more toroidal structure. So there are clearly ways where we can set up resonance and that might be one thing that we are missing in our wind hex but also as i will show you later it has serious effects with the capability of a cavitation cutting system and i'm going to basically all the parameters here and equations are um, given and so this will be useful for people thinking about this they found this uh, particularly interesting effect in one piece of literature here where we had this growing, shedding and collapsing, diffusing area. And so these things are relevant for any kind of jet um, where you have um, these self-resonating pro properties, I guess. And so uh, we go down, blah, 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 and they look at all kinds of different jets. And here we've got some cavitation patterns on a, a striped uh, source. So uh, these are for different jet diameters. You can see the damage on there. And it's, it's interesting. What I'm looking at here looks a bit like the 
the hydro wave pattern of the device that does the hydro waves. So it's kind of like you can, you can understand how someone might come up with that. And look at these little beauties for uh, different erosion pits based on different parameters here. So I think there's a lot we can learn from this paper. Okay. Um, and uh, some close ups here. Um, see, these are ones when it's striking the target at an angle. And um, you've got various papers there where they looked at various aspects and uh, the angle of attack and so forth. Anyway, so here, industrial applications of cavitating jets. Jet hydrodynamics for cleaning applications. Okay, so you can often, often see these things used for cleaning um, and so on. And it discusses those. But um, it's this aspect down the bottom here. Um, that I am really interested in. It is this kind of like um, cavitation nozzle system to induce cavitation by flow separation here. So we've got a, an adjustment there. And it isn't that one, it's this drawing which got me rather excited. So in this caveat, uh, review here it says the authors 26 also carried out several tests to compare the rock cutting ability of a conventional and structured cavitating jet a typical rock cutting comparison is shown in figure 18b this one here here between a cavi jet and a conventional smith nozzle supplied for use in roller cone deep hole bit Figure 18a, this one here, shows the dimensions of an organ pipe configuration used to feed either a standard Smith tool nozzle, so that is this profile here, okay? Smith nozzle, blah, blah, blah. Um, configuration used for to feed either a standard smith tool nozzle shape or a cavi jet nozzle and that's what we can see on the right here so it's very distinctly different okay it kind of comes in like on the radius and then it has a flat bit and then it comes out at an angle okay a top view of one face of a six inch cube specimen of Indiana limestone is shown in figure 18b. To allow a half circle cut to be made by each nozzle, one half of the rock face was protected by a metal plate. It is found that under the same operating conditions, the mean slot depth cut by the organ pipe cabijet was 4.3 times deeper than that cut by the Smith nozzle. Okay, that is the power of solitons. Okay, and it creates these solitons. Cavijet nozzle versus Smith nozzle, nozzle geometry, rock cutting comparison. Nozzle geometry, rock cutting comparison. You can see it really has chewed out a huge amount of this limestone, and over here it has not. <laughs> okay, and it's saying down here. Uh, the experimental results showed that the pressure amplitude peak occurs at a distance of 5 to 13 times the nozzle outlet diameter. They also found that under the same operating conditions, the cutting potential of self-resonating cavitating, cavitating jets is twice that of conventional jets. Okay, I rest my case. So, I think that, for instance, in HHO systems, if you want to really seriously guarantee that you're going to get um, some cavitation going on uh, uh, it rather the solitons being formed you might like to create a cavity that was self resonating and had this kind of nozzle output now um, would this be for the uh, input uh, gas and then we light it out here and so it's creating solitons of the HHO that would be interesting why because if that ignites and it stays as a soliton 
then you would imagine that it is producing a toroidal moment, okay? Because you have charged particles moving around in a soliton fashion, and that is your basic toroidal moment. It might actually have been what happened in the um, cavitation experiment, or rather the um, work of Klimov, where he had a uh, plasma chamber and then he has a spark discharge and it forces it through a capillary. So it's a capillary discharge and it comes out and produces this kind of spiral kind of uh, beam coming out, which is also what was saw by Slobodan Stankovic. And it might have been that when Slobodan Stankovic was burning through a piece of graphite in a graphite crucible, Maybe he created a hole that ended up by producing a nozzle a bit like this. Or maybe it was just the shear forces, as I've argued before. Just putting the HHO through a capillary is going to cause a soliton to form or a series of solitons to form and they will have a toroidal moment. And so, um, but whatever, I think we can learn from this, from jets to produce uh, HHO jets which are not discussed in here, and also for things potentially with the Windex. So that's essentially all I wanted to say. I will share the link to the paper in the description of the video, and I would be interested to hear your thoughts. So you can see here, steady flow. This is this organ pipe resonant cavity here, and they've, they've got the dimensions for that. And this is the cavijet type nozzle. And here are the vortex rings. This is a vortex ring. This is a vortex ring. This is a vortex ring. And inside there, you've also got these cavitation uh, bubbles going on. So there's all kinds of goodness going on, which would be great to have, not just in a liquid fluid that they're talking about here, but in a gaseous fluid or even in a fluid of etheric matter. So um, what can we imagine this would do? I think we can learn from this. Let's see. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video.